All right, folks, welcome to the first part of this Low Earth Satellite seminar series. Uh, this is going to be a quick overview of the ADCS Attitude Determination and Control System. And before I get into that, I wanted to talk about the more broader term, which is used for larger satellites and just aerospace engineering in general. And that's Guidance, Navigation, and Control, which GNC for short. And so I drew this control block diagram here that kind of shows all the different piece, part, piece parts of this. So the G guidance and GNC is basically the commands. It's where I want to go. Uh, you know, the ascent phase of the rocket, the tumbling of the rocket, any, you know, orbital transfers or maneuvers, anything that I want to do, you know, pointing for communication, anything like that, that comes in here to commands. The, uh, I'm going to jump across here. The satellite here, this block is basically represents the satellite itself. It's sort of the physics behind it. And the output is sort of what the system is doing. Is it tumbling? Is it spinning? Is it moving? Is it translating? You know, things like that. And as far as I know, I don't actually know this information. So I need what's called a, a navigation block. And, and technically, this is in control block diagram world, this is supposed to be a sensor block. So this is going to be like your GPS, your rate gyros, your things like that. And this is going to estimate your state. So where am I? Um, how fast am I spinning? What angle am I pointing? Things like that. And so I have these, these tildes above these variables here to essentially show that this is an estimate or a measurement of where I think I am. If I take my commands of where I want to go and where I think I am and I subtract the two, I'm going to get an error signal and I can take that error signal and pass it through a control block, which basically says based on where I want to go and where I think I am, I'm going to apply control to get me from where I think I am to where I want to go. And those are control signals that are sent to the satellite and then the satellite will essentially start moving. Okay. Now, as far as the satellite is concerned, you know, what sort of information do I need in order to fully characterize the satellite? So I created a little demo here out at, at of at my Kids Connects. And so the first thing, so this could be, you could consider this like a, a, a tiny 1U CubeSat. And I have these vectors here to sort of denote the different axes. So a, a CubeSat can yaw about this sort of orange color. It can pitch about this yellow color and it can roll about this red color. And so those variables, phi, theta, psi, roll, pitch, yaw, are gonna denote my roll, pitch, and yaw of the aircraft. So I need to know that information. I also need to know where I am in the orbit. So if my fist is the Earth and I'm orbiting around, I need to know my latitude, my longitude, my altitude. Sometimes people use northeast down, and if you're in space and you're you know, in some orbit, you're going to use things like semi-major axis, inclination, eccentricity, and variables like that to essentially say where I am. Now, as I said before, this satellite is not really part of the uh, hardware. It's, it's just, it, it exists in space. And this, so this block is a sort of a representation of physics. Typically on a lower satellite or a CubeSat like this, the command is actually going to be sent through the CNDH or the command and data handling board. And so this uh, orange dash, or sorry, this purple dashed line here, if I just take my control block, you know, the error computation and my navigation block, my estimation, all of that is the typically called the attitude determination and control board, ADCS. And so if you break that down, there's two things that happen in ADCS. You have attitude to estimation, and you have numerous sensors to do that. Horizon sensors that can measure the horizon of the Earth, magnetometers which measure the magnetic field, sun sensors which can get you the vector of the sun, star trackers which take pictures of the stars, and then rate gyros which actually tell you how fast um, your satellite is spinning. Now all of these put together, and you don't actually need all of them on one satellite. Some of these are better than others, some are bigger than others. There's engineering trade-offs and systems trade-offs that you take, you, you make every time you design a satellite. But all of those will give you your nav state. It'll tell you where you are, I, I guess I need to put GPS on here, but it'll tell you where you are and what angle you're spinning at. Once you know that and you have the commands from your command and data handling block, you can do attitude control. And at that point, you can use things like control moment gyros, which are basically like um, spinning bike tires. And they're spinning, and you rotate the bike tire, and it creates like an angular momentum uh, shift or, or a moment placed on the system. 
Um, similar to control moment gyros are reaction wheels, and those are basically a like sinks kind of idea. Uh, idea. You, you spin something in space, and then the satellite spins the other way. You have magnet torquers, which create, they, uh, you pass current through a coil, and it creates a magnetic field, and that magnetic field opposes the Earth's magnetic field, and you create a torque on the satellite. And then if you have larger satellites, a small one, you CubeSats typically don't have thrusters, but it's possible to have like cold gas thrusters on, on a CubeSat. But yeah, you can use thrusters to actually just have like pulse jets to pulse jet you around. And all of that is basically, in a nutshell, the ADCS board that's on a typical CubeSat or a low Earth satellite, and also a subset of the larger GNC guidance navigation and control block. So uh, this is, like I said, this is an overview, first part series, and uh, more seminars will be coming soon. And I hope you enjoy the rest of the semester.